before we get into that, Yuli, we do have the winner okay. of Idlewild with us. Joseph Anderson, better known maybe as Joey Buckets, joining for the first time. We knew it was only a matter of time. He's finally with us. How's it going, brother? Good to have you on here. What's up, guys? How's it going? Uh-oh. Yeah, the curse. What happened? Can't hear him. I can hear can't him. Hear me? I can hear him. You can't? Yeah. No curse. It's the Yuli curse. Oh, no. Say something, Joey. That's saying, go, Yuli. Yeah, he's back, yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're back. All right. Well, um, I don't know if you watch the podcast at all, but you're definitely a name that gets thrown around quite a bit on here of where we're just like, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. And uh, it seemed like this past weekend was that time. So my first question to you, Joey, was there anything that you could put down on paper of like why it happened this past weekend versus why it hasn't happened the many times that you have been in contention? Uh, I don't think there's one like thing. I think it's a, it's a lot of different things that, I mean, I could go into details of those things. Please, please do. A, yeah, please do. The floor is yours, brother. Yeah. So I think, um, um, again, it was like a, a totally different tournament for me mentally. Um, I was, uh, again, I had missed cash the last two weekends at European open and at Ledgestone and, um, or missed the cut, I guess. And then, um, going into Idlewild, my buddy from back home, my caddy, Nate, he came up and he's been coming to every Idlewild since I started playing in 2022. And, um, I just kind of told him before the tournament even started, I just want to, you know, enjoy disc golf, enjoy the competition, just watch, watch everybody throw their shots and just enjoy the flight of the disc. And uh, of course, try my best and focus and everything, but try not to let that um, get to me. And then I think as well, my practice um, week beforehand, I mean, I drove down Sunday evening, got a practice around in Sunday. And then I played like every single day and, you know, practice like it was a tournament and took my time on, uh, all my rounds nice um yeah looking at your season it's uh it's honestly kind of interesting the ebbs and flows that your season has been this year where you kind of start off like straight out of a cannon um with the uh chess.com you were kind of in the mix at that tournament for quite a bit uh, and then you had, you know, a couple of decent finishes at Waco and the open at Austin. And then you kind of had a little blip in there where you did finish uh, inside the top 30 at Texas States, Jonesboro, Music City Open. And then all of a sudden you came back Champions Cup top 10, uh, Dynamic Disc Open top 10. And then like you were saying, uh, you went on that kind of stretch of uh, leading into actually the European tournaments, which I'm curious, did the European tournaments, did you feel like the Swedish open Krokel open that had obviously much weaker fields Did did having a couple top finishes there. Did that also kind of help you? Cause you went on that stretch from OTB through preserve where you're 46, 28, 28, 40. Did that having those couple tournaments, did that kind of re re energize you or kind of give you that confidence that you need? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I have never been to Europe uh, before this year. I, I actually only flew on a plane one time before flying over to Europe. So what? it was kind of a crazy, yeah, it was a crazy experience. And, um, I, I mean, I, it, it's so different over there. It's like a whole culture shock. And I just felt like the only thing I like felt comfortable doing was playing disc golf. And then like, when I was off the course, I was like, looking at the landscape and just looking at all the beautiful nature and everything. So yeah, Krokel and Sweden that those definitely gave me a good confidence boost. So do you have like a, do you have like a posse that you roll around with on tour and like when you're over in Europe or are you like doing this solo dolo? Um, yeah. So I have a touring partner, uh, Braden sides. Uh, we tour together in the RV, but uh, okay. he did not go to Europe with me. Um, when I went to Europe, I just stayed with, uh, group of guys from the u.s actually i think ezra and aaron and nice. kyle there was a whole bunch of us getting airbnbs together and stuff okay so you do like kind of having some people out there so that way you know when you're done practicing or whatever you got you got some buddies to do stuff with versus just sitting in a hotel room or you know sitting in your rv or whatever by yourself yeah yeah for sure i mean 
I normally don't get uh, Airbnbs in the U.S. because I have the RV, and the RV is, you know, it's great. And I like staying at the course so I can practice a lot. But, uh, yeah, when I went to Europe, I, we had some nice Airbnbs, so that was nice. All right, I got to ask, because I feel like me and you haven't really ever had, like, a conversation. I've seen you, obviously, said what's up and stuff like that. But to me, you're kind of like a mysterious person. Like, I don't – all of a sudden, you just popped on tour – it was just like a, initially it was just kind of like a random name on the leaderboard where I'm like, I've never seen that name before. And then slowly it was like, Oh, I've seen that name. Okay. It's still that name. And then all of a sudden you're getting on coverage. So give me a little background. You know, we were just talking before you came on, we were just talking about the Robinson brothers, how they have never played any other sport. They've only played disc golf their whole lives. Like where, where's your kind of athletic background and where did you make the transition to start touring kind of, Walk us through all that. Yeah, so I, growing up, I played, I guess, three different sports, but I never really, it was such, it was at such a young age that I never really, like, fully got into it and really got passionate about them, but I played basketball when I was really young on, like, a really small level, and then soccer as well, and then I also ran cross country in middle school, um, and then I What's your best 5K like, time? Five. I actually never even ran 5K. We just ran like two miles in high oh, school. Oh, dark horse. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I um, I want to say my time was like I was I was just over or just under a seven minute mile. So I was like running like a 1340 two mile. It's pretty so good it for middle yeah, school though. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I'm probably the same speed. Like if I just got back in shape and started running again. Gotcha. But um, yeah, I discovered disc golf when I was pretty young. Uh, probably like 12 or 13. So I've been playing for like eight, eight, eight or seven or eight, nine years, maybe. And, um, never really started playing tournaments until 2019. And I only played like two junior tournaments and did pretty well. Um, and then I think in 2021 is when I really started playing more and I played the NADGT finale in, uh, Austin, Texas and got third and then jumped up to MPO. So what's like the school, like, uh, it's always fascinating to me to hear the thought process of like what people are doing from like high school to college or like, did you go to college? Did you skip college? Did you graduate? No, actually, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I didn't actually even graduate. I didn't graduate high school. Um, oh, I was taking classes. Uh, COVID hit. I did online and it was super kind of tough to, you know, do it and learn and actually like be accountable. And then, um, and then I, we ended up going back to school, but I switched to a different school cause we like moved or something and it, there was just a lot going on. And, um, yeah, I never even finished. I mean, I still have a chance to, you know, get my GED or get some college credits for sure. But, uh, yeah, I never actually graduated. So what, what, uh, like, did you have support and stuff to be able to start touring? Like, how were you able to make that transition of, you know what, I'm not going to, you know, pursue like an education. I'm going to go all in on disc golf. Like, how were you able to do that? Um, that's a good question. Um, so I was playing this B tier up at the IDGC, which is not too far from my house. And uh, my brother-in-law, like, hit me up the next day, and he's like, oh, look where I'm at. I'm at the IDGC. And I was, like, camping there still from the tournament. I was like, oh, I'm here. And went out there, and uh, I met him and met my, now my, like, manager, Clark. And he uh, he just saw the talent in me. We played around that day, and he just saw the talent in me, and he wanted to, like, help me out in any way, whatever. And he ended up, like, giving me a van. Um, and that, I used that van last year i think to travel around oh wow and um yeah i mean he's been a big help so i guess what about, that's your, the what about your parents they yeah i mean like, my parents yeah just don't go to school you're good <laughs> no i mean my dad was it, baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah my dad was uh he definitely wanted me to finish high school and get you know credits and do finish it but um once i started you know succeeding i guess they uh they were like okay he's I guess he's good at disc golf. I don't know. Did you, yeah. did you bring up, like, I don't know how, how involved your parents are, but were you bringing up, like, you know, Ricky's contract, Paul's contract, stuff like that to where you could be like, no, look, there's there's money to be had? 
was that kind of like a helpful, helpful way to get your parents to, to see that it wasn't a uh, crazy idea to go out there and try to play disc golf tournaments? Um, my dad is actually a fan. He's probably watching right now, honestly, but he, oh, um, shout he out. let's go. <laughs> yeah. He might be watching right now, but yeah. Um, he's a fan of disc golf, so he kind of knows okay. about that. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It just, it just kind of happened. And my mom was in full support of whatever I wanted to do. Shout out to my mom. That's awesome. That's sick. And, and now, uh, now, you know, winning on tour, you know, nice little paycheck, not too, not too shabby. I'm sure that was probably the most money you've made in disc golf in a, in a weekend, which is very, very nice. And I'm sure like moving forward too now, like your numbers and all that stuff with sponsorships, all that stuff changed once you become a champion on tour. So, uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I love that. There's actually now a path for people to be like, you know what? I actually want to pursue this. Now it's not gonna obviously work for everyone, right? There are gonna be some people that go out and never cash in the first three months and be like, okay, I can't do this anymore. Uh, but I just love that now there's there's enough money in disc golf to where now you can actually do that. You can actually go all in and try to make some money playing, which is awesome. Was there, was there ever a, a time where you were playing and let's say, you know, 2022 or 2023 and you were like, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it out here. Or were you all just pretty confident? Like, oh, I'm as good as these guys. I can make this happen. Um, I always had, uh, the, the trust and I, I knew for myself, like deep down, I knew I was good enough. Um, I was living pretty much out of a minivan for the most part. I would get some Airbnbs with some people. I remember later in the year and my sister actually lives in New York, so I spent some time there with her later in the year during the Green Mountain and MVP last year. So, I mean, I had little spots to stay, but I had confidence in myself the whole time. If if someone dropped a million-dollar contract right now on your head, what would be the first three things that you would do differently touring? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't think anything, honestly. So you like you like chilling in the RV, being right there on the course, all that. Oh yeah, I I love being on the course. I love because I get just super like I get this need to just this want to play and practice whatever course it is or putt or whatever it is, just out of nowhere. So mm -hmm. like I love just like oh oh I want to play now. Let me go practice and just grab my bag and walk out the nicer RV. Nicer RV. Just say nice nicer RV. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, a, nice king, a, big RV. maybe yeah. a king bed in the back. What, I don't know what RV you have, but just say nicer RV. That's <laughs> yeah. fine. Maybe, maybe like a little hot tub somewhere that you could like, uh, you could pull Ooh. out of the back and, uh, you know, um, so, so you, you have a, you have a touring partner. I'm, su I'm assuming you guys probably take turns and stuff or is one of you, Hey, I'm the driver of the RV. I don't trust this other guy. No, uh, we kind of just take turns, you know, drive for two or three hours. And then, you know, if you're the passenger, you're just kind of quiet, just trying to act like you're a statue, not even there, you know, after a while. And <laughs> if you're driving for a long time, you're feeling it, you're vibing to the music, whatever, then you're good. But then it's like, hey, you want to drive? And it's like, not really. <laughs> but I've been driving for, for like four hours, dude. And it's like, okay, sure. You know, who, uh, who, who would be able to get the RV through the notch in Vermont? Oh my word. I honestly, I was thinking about this earlier today. Can that even go? You're talking about the notch through it, it like can. from smugglers to, to stone. Yeah. Uh, the first year that Ezra went there with the RV, he didn't realize that the notch <laughs> existed. And so he made it through, he made it through, but I, I, I don't think it was, I don't think it was pretty. I don't think a lot of people were happy with him either. <laughs> I think he kind of stopped traffic from both sides. Um, yeah, but luckily there is another route that you can take uh, that doesn't uh, force you to go through the notch, um, which is, uh, yeah, which is nuts. Uh, gosh, the first time driving through that, I was like, this is crazy. You got rock climbers that like half their mm -hmm. body are over on the road and you got people just like getting out of their cars to walk around. Yeah, that's, if you've never been, guys, GMC, it's, a, it's an absolute one. You should go just to play the courses. The courses are incredible, but go up there. It's, it's some, some of the best hikes and, and, I don't know, beauty stuff. Are you big on that too, Joey? Like, are you like, hey, I got to, I got, 
we got to stop here because there's a sick national park. Are you big on the um, on the uh, like nature side of disc golf that some people have? I mean, yeah, there's definitely a part of me that like when I was uh, making the drive from DDO to I went to Las Vegas for the Las Vegas challenge, but I didn't play, but I, I went there to hang out and I stopped by the um, the Grand Canyon, which was nice. super cool. Nice. And, uh, and then stopped in the Redwoods up to Oregon right before Portland Open, which was also cool. So, yeah, I'll stop if it's like just pure nature, but if it's like a like a an amusement or like what do you call it? A, like an attraction almost in a way, I, I probably don't care. What okay. do you do off off the course for fun? Or like you, you know, you guys play board games, video games or go out for some bowling or or is it just disc golf, disc golf, disc golf? That's all you think about go to bed wake up disc golf oh, man <laughs> it's it's a lot of disc golf i'm not yeah. gonna lie um i mean every once in a while we'll go to uh like a like an arcade place or a fun whatever park and play some mini golf maybe or you know gotcha. play some arcade yeah what's the uh what's the goals look like now for the rest of the season have have anything kind of adjusted uh now that you've won um well now yeah now that i've won it's kind of I kind of felt it. So now I know that it's, it feels even more uh, attainable now. So um, my manager was actually like telling me, you know, I was maybe going to skip D glow and we were kind of discussing that. And he was like, you should go up to green mountain and like really early in practice and try to get a, get a win there. And that was before Idlewild. And then I ended up winning Idlewild. And so now I'm like, well, I want Idlewild. I don't know, man. Might as well but, go um, to everything. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, I feel like my goals haven't really changed. I don't really have a lot of concrete goals. They're more so mental goals, I would say. Okay. Yeah. And we were talking a little bit about your game, you know, obviously the, the throw that you had on 18 was pretty nutty, but it, it doesn't really feel like there's a part of your game that seems to be like a weakness. Like, it seems like every part you, like you have pretty much every facet. Do you think like the one big thing that's kind of maybe holding you back is like the in between the ears, like decision-making or like what, cause you kind of talked about that a little bit about how you feel like the mental side was something that really helped you at Idlewild. Do you feel like that's kind of something that is the only thing for you to really work on? Um, I mean, I could definitely throw a little bit farther. I know a lot of guys throw really far. Um, Oh, sides or just, or just backhand? Um, I think my forehand is pretty good. Honestly, I think I throw my forehand and my backhand very similar distance, which is kind of crazy. It's great gotcha. for my forehand, but it's a little weak on the backhand. Um, but like hole 16 at Idlewild, the, the open par 5, Calvin, is. I think he was throwing a fairway, and I'm throwing distance driver, yeah. and we're throwing it kind of similar, and I'm flying mine. Like, <laughs> you know. It's just the corgis. Don't worry about them. Someone's breaking in. <laughs> yes, it's it's okay. That the, the the Twitter hacker has now infiltrated my house. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, I mean it, it's it's so exciting to see like younger players coming up because we've seen flashes of the pan, in the pan of like random people just having like pop off tournaments and then all of a sudden just kind of go back in the shadows. But there's certain players that we can look at uh, in years past. Like we knew Cole was bound to win a tournament. You know, it was only a matter of time. Uh, Gannon was another one. And then I would say you're probably the, the obviously the newest winner that we were like, he is going to fin f eventually figure it out and win. And like we said too, like winning on tour, you kind of need to have some things go your way. If Isaac Robinson plays decent to well that final round, who knows, right? Like we've seen Isaac where he just goes unconscious mode. And you kind of still like to win on tour, you need to play well and you need other things to kind of happen for you. And it's very, very tough. Like, yeah, I actually, I, I wanted to ask him about that. Isaac ha has like a pretty nice lead. Yeah. What were you thinking when he takes the triple bogey? <laughs> were you, were, were you just like, Oh yeah, I knew that was coming. This is my weekend. Like things are, things are just going to go my way. Or were you just, ah, eh, whatever he's doing his thing. I'm doing my thing. Oh man. Um or are you yeah. like yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. <that is> <laughs> 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 yeah, 
Yeah, so on 13, actually, so his first shot went OB, but then he threw kind of like, he cut the corner over the OB on the second shot, and I knew it wasn't a good shot, but I didn't realize it also went OB, so his second shot went OB as well, until I got up there and I saw he was throwing from a flag and OB, and I was like, okay, so he went OB twice. Um, but thinking-wise, I, I knew... I knew that I was that putt that I made on 13 was for something, probably the lead. But um, I don't know. I just didn't let it get to my head. I was just like, it's, this is hole 13. My caddy said it on the next hole. Shout out to my caddy, Nate. Um, on the next tee pad, I was like, I think I'm in the lead. Because I think I checked scores. I was like, I think I'm in the lead. Yeah, you have that scared. long walk. You have that long yeah. walk to 14. Yeah, very long walk. And um, he told me, he was like, you know, you just you're just playing the best right now. You you happen to be playing the best right now. There's still disc golf to play. Let's see where you're at in a few holes. You know, he wasn't like, Oh, you need to do this or this. He was just like, shaking. He's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause a course like Idlewild, that's not a course. We've, we've played courses on tour where if you have a one or two shot lead with a couple holes left, you're like, it's pretty much wrapped up. You're probably going to win 90% of the time. Of course, like Idlewild, having like a two-shot lead with two to play is scary. Yeah. And, I mean, the way you played those last couple holes, um, first off, I think the way you played 17, I don't know why everyone doesn't try to play it that way. To me, like, that seems like, obviously, you were a little a little on the dicey side, that final. You probably a little juice there. Probably got a little bit farther up the oh. fairway uh, than you're hoping. But that 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 playoff to the right just seems like the that's safest. A, that's a spot, yeah. It's the safest play. And then the putt, that's the other thing. The putt is also, like, you're now putting to, like, where there's actually, if you miss, you can actually still stay in bounds. So, um, I mean, I don't know. Wait, that, wait, wait. You thinking after Calvin knocks that biggie oh, right gosh. in your eyeball? Oh gosh! <laughs> oh, man, like I... oh yeah, of course. I have a three shot lead. I throw it out of bounds left, easiest hole on the course, and of course he's gonna eagle. Yeah, um, I I kind of knew he was gonna make that putt. I mean, he's, kinda, <laughs> he's a proven player, and uh, that was like just inside the circle, I think, like right around thirty feet. And uh, after he made it, I I, I kind of expected him to make it in a way. And after he made it, I was just like, "Yeah, that's." I mean, that's a nice putt. Yeah, this is this is such a good <laughs> this is such a good win because not only is it on a course like Idlewild that you know is is a it's a very challenging course. You can't really just go out there and shoot twelve under every round and just be like, "Up, oh, I just kind of just walk through it." got my 13 birdies, one bogey and on to the next, like you're going to be in bad spots. And then couple that with you have Calvin and Isaac breathing down your neck, basically the whole round. Like this is a really good win. This is like looking back on it. People are going to look at this as a really good win. Now, my question is how confident are you that you can win at Idlewild again? Because it, it, it doesn't happen. If you win at Idlewild, Idlewild's like, all right, you got your one deuces. Like how, how confident are you feeling it, that you can win back uh, at that tournament? Oh man. I mean, that, that place is really special to me being my first pro tour tournament, but uh, yeah, she's, she's, she's a special course for sure. <laughs> she was, <laughs> man, I don't know. I, I think I could win there again, but it's, you just can't be off. You can't be off on your lines. I think that's the main thing. You're off just a little bit like the Y tree hole kick OB. There's OB yeah. creeks lurking on like every hole. It feels like. Yeah. Some of those holes, just like brutal, brutal kicks can just turn a turn around upside down real quick. Um, all right. I got to ask the hat. What, what, uh, have you always worn a bucket hat? What's, what's with the bucket hat? Um, no, Man, where so is the I bucket haven't... hat? How are you not wearing a bucket hat right now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I took a shower and my hair was like, I'm letting it dry or dry, you know, whatever. But, uh, I used to wear like a cap, like you guys are wearing. And then I went to play a tournament and I just wore this like fishing bucket hat. It's the first one that I ever like had or wore, and my dad called it the boonie hat. You know, we're playing this like flex start. We're actually playing it at Cliff Stevens in Florida. Oh, nice. playing this flex start, and I just remember like the first hole. It's like a long par three or whatever, and I'm like 80 feet for birdie. I'm like, 
man, dad, should I even run this? You know, whatever. And he's like, he's not telling me to run it or no, he never tells me. And then I like just made it and then shot this crazy, whatever, good round. And he's like, I can't believe you just wore that bucket hat, you know, <laughs> the boonie hat. And then it just kind of stuck. Now, are we, are we going to see any like bucket hats for sale? The people in the chat want to know. You have to. The people, the people want Joey bucket hats. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're working on that. Me and my manager, we're trying to find a good, uh, I guess, manufacturer of bucket hats. Cause, um, some, some, I've had some bucket hats that I'm like, yeah, this is nice. And I wear it. And I'm like, wasn't nice. You know, after the day's over, I'm like that, that wasn't a good one, you know? So the ones that I wear normally in the tournaments that you see, those are good ones. Um, so we're just trying to find good ones that we can make and, Nice. I like it. All right. Before we let you go, something that uh, we do with every new guest that comes on the podcast is we ask him about their pet peeves. What is something that really gets under your skin, whether it's on tour or on the RV or anything disc golf related that just gets under your skin? What is what's a pet peeve of Joey Buckets? Man pet peeve disc golf related or tour related hmm. something that you just can't stand that is a tough one i am it might be all the talk about uh spit outs oh <laughs> i feel like yes. I, I feel like give uh, it to us i feel like a, i feel like a good putt is a good putt and if it yes. spits out then it spits out man you yes. know a good uh advocator for that is evan smith he has such a nose up and he has touch on his putt. He has his nose up every time. And he's like, and he believes the same thing. It's like, if it spits out, it was a bad putt. Either putt where you're hitting low left center and it drops in the cage, you know? I mean, the cage isn't changing. The cage ain't going to mess you up, you know? Love I it. like this. I like this. Yeah. More, more love for the, for the baskets out there. The baskets get destroyed all the time. I Now, yeah. I do think, Joey... I would love to see the outer chain of the basket get removed. I would love to see that. The outer chain. So just one chain at the one ring at the bottom. I mean, you could, you could create like an inner chain as well. If you wanted to have more chains, but essentially right now, I think the chains are too wide and one that would eliminate a lot of people like hitting the chain and then like catching on the edge. Because right now the basket, the size of the basket is actually a good size, but the chains are too wide. So I want to see the chains get brought in a little bit. And then also that makes, because in my, my thought is like, everyone wants to see putting get harder because right now, none of us are really missing from 15 feet. So like, how do you make it to where 15 footer gets scary a little bit? Uh, you, yeah. you bring the chains in to where now, yeah. A lot more air balls are going to happen also from farther away. I don't know. Or you just, or you just, uh, you have to, I think what some of these guys who get all the spit outs, I think they want everybody to putt that hard so that there's yeah, like, I, like I a miles that. per hour. Like you have to, you have to be a, a certain miles per hour in order for it to count. You know, maybe that's what we should do. Yeah, people, they, people, they keep firing it in, dude. They want to. They want to change it. Spit out, and then they fire it again. The next they want. They want to make us have instead of baskets, have like glass that you have to break. And if the glass doesn't break, yeah. you didn't yeah. put it hard enough. No, that's true. All like right, that. you only hit them with your question. Okay, out of all the people on tour, who do you look at their game or a part of their game, and you go, "Man, that's nice. I wish I had a little of that." Oh man. Honestly, I think this was my first time playing with this person last weekend and he has no wobble in his entire game. It feels like Ooh. every time the disc comes out of his hand, no wobble. I wish my putt could be as smooth and like as non wobbly as Ben Callaway, man. Oh, hey, that's, that's, good that's one. a good one. That's a good and one. And he got that ace dude. Nice. That is yeah. nice. Callaway sure. does. He, he's, he's got, he's got an underrated pretty. game. He's got a super underrated game. Yeah. He's, he's probably next up. I was going to say, he's got to be someone, too, that's like due to win one of these. Oh, for sure. You know? How, how can you have a game like that and not have won? I mean, it's just, like you said, there's no wobble. He doesn't have any wobbles. It should just go where he wants. 
Yeah, his back end is so smooth. And, and he gets so much so distance. Far. He gets so much distance without having to throw. Like, he doesn't look like he's really throwing it that hard. No. All right, so what's what's next up, Joey, before we let you go? Worlds Worlds is coming up. Like, what's what's the mindset heading in? You, you're literally the only person going to Worlds with a win under your belt. I mean, there's a good chance you're probably going to be on a feature card, too, honestly. Oh, you think? Um, yeah, Worlds is coming up. I just got here to Lynchburg, got a practice round in at New London. I've, I've never actually been here, so what are your New thoughts? London was great. Yeah, I like New London a lot. There's a lot of placement, a lot of uh, shaping and landing with touch. So, yeah, that, that place has it all. What do you think of hole six? The par five. Hole six. That hole is very hard. I'll say that. I'll I'll be playing that one for par. Even playing that one for par is tough. Like it's you have to throw you have to throw four good shots. Yeah. 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 It's a great hole. Joe, I have to tell you something too. Secret of mine. Okay. Every single season after the first couple tournaments of the season, I pick a nemesis. (laughs) Yeah. And every single season, I pick somebody who's really, really good. This season, I was like, all right, I'm going to pick somebody who's like probably not the best player in the world this time. Because I picked Eagle one time. He was a rookie. And then he just turned into Eagle. Yeah. Um, I picked Nico when I was young. He ended up winning four player of the years in a row after that. <laughs> so that was solid. So this year I'm finally like, no, I'm picking somebody else. It's going to happen. And I picked Joey buckets. And then you decide to win every <laughs> tournament, take top three all over the world, oh, get the man. win at Idlewild. So I just wanted to let you know that you are, you are no longer my nemesis. I'm opting out of this contract of mine and i'm picking somebody else it's like you gotta uh, find someone else now yeah <laughs> that's but funny I figured you, it would be funny to know that that you were my pick this year and of course you just absolutely go off and have a fantastic season we're happy to see it here on tour life man congratulations on your win buddy thanks thanks yeah, but before you head out we got a couple hundred people watching sponsors people shout outs anything anything you got for the people Oh, yeah. Shout out to my family um, back in Florida and Athens, Georgia, and my one sister in New York. And then my sponsors, Castaplast, uh, Down South Discs, and Pure Bags. Love it. What's, uh, real quick, what's your go-to arcade game? Oh, go-to arcade game? I just got to see if I have be... any competition here. I got to see if I got any competition. Don't, don't pick them. I'm telling you. Stay away. <laughs> well, it depends on what game he picks. If he Stay. picks ski ball, I'm out. Oh wow, ski ball! Now that you say that, I might pick ski ball. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, come on, who picks ski I ball? Was, <laughs> I, I was going to say ski just basketball, awesome. but oh, see now, pop a shot. Yeah, that's but, what I'm but I'm no good. I'm no good at at arcade games, really. Oh. Just do it for fun. Yeah. Right. But ski ball, I'm I'm decent at ski ball, I guess. Okay, all right. I like, I like a good little... I, I actually played in the World Championships of Ski Ball or something. Oh, um, really? Yeah. No, they take it very... It's actually in, uh, it's oh. actually in Austin, Texas is where it went down. Um, they take it very seriously there. These what people, place did you get? Uh, I think I got eliminated. I don't even think I got into the placement rounds. I think I got eliminated <laughs> in the first or second round or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it was fun. It was a good time. So. All right. Hey, dude, we appreciate it. Awesome. Finally getting to talk to you. I'm sure this will not be our last time. Uh, and we'll be up in Virginia here shortly to see you up there as well. So wish you the best of luck in the rest of the season. You got one more. Yeah, I did. You'll be happy that at Jomez before the, you know, final round, they have us do those little interviews, hype pieces for the final round. Heck yeah. I picked you to win by two. Oh, wow. You know, I a lot it. of people were saying that. They were like, they didn't want to tell me before the tournament, but they felt like I was going to win and all this stuff. Oh, wow. Before there were the so tournament. many people that were like that. Like, yeah. J- Jeremy was also saying that. He, 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 he said this after round one. He's like, dude, I don't know what this guy's all about, but he looks good. He might win the tournament. <laughs> but I picked win by two. The week before, I picked Gannon to win by eight. That was pretty close. Wow. He won by seven. So who's, who's, Who you got for Worlds? Let's hear yeah, it now. That's what I'm Worlds. saying. I or do you I, have to wait? It's kind of one of those wait. things. It's a, it's a final round thing. I oh, okay. 
Well, well you can just I take me now. Pick... You're 100 percent correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I I can't pick, and I and Joey's on. So if I don't pick him, that'd be rude, and I'm not going to do that with him on the show. Fair enough. All right. Well, Joey, we appreciate it. Thank you for taking your time to jump on here, brother. And uh, good luck at Worlds next week. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. 